this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're called to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited. It's another Sunday, another opportunity that we have to worship the Lord our God. We thank God for you, our virtual viewers, and those of you that are here. So we invite you to clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with a voice of triumph, even as we celebrate the Lord, our risen Savior, on this day, on this Sunday morning. Again, we invite you to this sacred, holy space, and we pray that even as we are singing unto the Lord, as we are worshiping and adoring him, that you too, in your virtual spaces, are worshiping the Lord with us. Will you join me as we invoke the presence of our God? O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we thank you that you have allowed us another opportunity to come before your presence, O oh God. Lord, you are mighty and matchless, majestic and perfect in all your ways. And we love you today and we pray that you will inhabit the praises of your people, both virtual and those that are here right now, O oh God that you will receive the glory and that the devil will be terrified. Lord, we love you and we praise you today. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Again, I welcome you to Encouragement Temple's Worship Experience. We invite you to stand with us. Clap your hands when you see that we're clapping. Tap your feet when the music feels a little bit good to you. And worship the Lord in the spirit of the truth.
how many of you know we serve an able God? The Bible says, with man we count things as impossible. With God, all things are possible. He's able. He's able to heal an ailing body. He's able to turn your morning into joy. But the song says, don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. It's a appropriate song as we head to the portion of our service where we seek God, where we pray. Before we begin to pray, we want to call out some names. Continue to pray for, pray for Sister Fifi. As she tunes in with us virtually and desires to be here. Keep her in prayer. Keep Sister KK McGibbon in prayer. Let the Lord touch and heal her body. Keep the Gibson family in prayer. A childhood friend of mine was in a motorcycle accident. Some some things keep him and his wife and his family in prayer. Keep the Phillips family in prayer. And those of you that's watching us virtually, if you desire prayer, leave a comment in the section. We'll pray for you as well. And those of you who know need prayer, we will. Pray for them as we pray. Whatever posture you decide, if you decide to stand, sit, or kneel, you're able to do that at this moment. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The song said, the, the verse in your kingdom come. Lord, we thank you today, God. Because you thought enough to create a world for humanity. You thought enough of the world, God, to speak things into existence. The sun that brings light and heat. In the day, you say, let there be, and it was, God. You spoke the moon into existence to give night, light to the night. God, you spoke everything that we see with our eyes into existence. That shows us how powerful is your word. How powerful your voice is. That the sound of your voice, there is life. At the words that you very speak, it brings forth life. And your words say everything that you spoke into existence was good. And God, we thank you because everything that you speak is good for us. But God, we thank you because you made us differently. Because the Bible said that you formed and created man after your very image and after your likeness. God, we thank you, God. Because in your forming of man, you gave man your very breath, the breath of life. You gave us a mind and the process to be able to reason, God. And so, God, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the little things that we take for granted, God. God, we thank you for the ability to raise our hands. We thank you for the ability just to roll out of bed. 
God, we thank you. Father, as I stand right here, Father, I ask you, God, to forgive humanity. Forgive us, God. For everything that's unpleasing to you, God. Oh, God, forgive us for lying. We're going to call them out. Forgive us for cheating. Forgive us for fornication, adultery. Forgive us for murder. God, forgive us for putting that idol in front of you, God. Forgive us, God, for not consulting you with our decisions that we make, God. Father, forgive us for that evil thought that we had towards our brothers and our sisters. Father God, forgive us for not reading our word the way that we should. Father, forgive us for not spending time with you. Father, forgive us for not considering the poor and the hungry. Father, forgive us for not being our brother's keeper. Father, we ask you, God, to forgive us for all that we've done to transgress against you. But, Father, we thank you because you said if we confess that you will forgive us, Father. So, God, we thank you for forgiveness. We ask you, God, just as David, God, to renew a right spirit in us, God. Give us a clean heart today, God. Father, as we stand here, God, and petition you, Father, we know, God, that this year is a new year, but God, troubles and trials, it consistently it will still is arising, God. God, as we look around, Father, you see the COVID-19 numbers are, are steadily increasing. Father, people are yet dying. Father, I ask you, God, to give strength to the, those who are bereaved in this moment. Give that person strength, God, who is suffering an unexpected loss. That person whose son was shot last night. That person whose grandbaby is missing. That person who is just wavering and doing anything and don't and nobody knows their whereabouts. Father, be with those families in their time of loss. Give them the strength, God, and give them the reminder, God, that all things work together for the good. God, you never said it was going to feel good. You never said it was going to taste good. You never said that it was all be feeling in our feelings. But God, you said it will work out for our good. That death, God, you said it will work out for our good to those who loved you. That person that suffered with stage four cancer, Father, you said it will work out for our good. God, we thank you in this season, God. Because your words inform us, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. That you are still a God of purpose. That you're yet a God of mercy. That you're yet a God that renews strength. So Father, be with those individuals, God. That have to lift, have to bear the burden of loss. That has to bear the burden of pain. But God, in the midst of that, God, raise up an individual, Father. That will remind the family that all of these are orchestrated by God. That this is the will of 
God in Christ Jesus concerning us. That in every tragedy, we look for the triumph. For every pain, we look for the purpose. Because your word cannot come back void. If all things work together for the good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose, then Father, I ask you, God, to help the people that's having problems believing. Help them to push past their pain so they can see you in the midst of it. Help them to look past disappointment so they can see you in the midst of the disappointment. But God, we thank you because you're yet a healer, God. Though that person may be dealing with cancer, we know that you can heal cancer. That person that's fighting COVID-19, Father, I ask you, God, to heal that person. Because, God, we have testimonies of those who've had COVID-19 and it made it through, God. And it was nothing but because of you, God, that it was able to make it through. So, God, I ask you, God, to go to the ICU units, God. God, heal that person, God. That's on their deathbed dealing with AIDS. Heal that person, God, that's fighting and struggling with the cancer. Heal that person, God, who's struggling with cirrhosis of the liver. God, heal that person that's struggling with emphysema, God. Because, God, we don't want to put so much on COVID-19, God. And not enough emphasis on everything else that's happening. Thank you that you see all of that. Oh God, we thank you in this moment, Father. Father, give that mama strength who's struggling because their child has no help for them. Be with that father, God, who's not compassionate with that child. God, you heal that child, God, that the doctors just want to give up on. Society says there's no help for them. But God, we know we serve a God that when society and when the world says no, God, that you can step in and say, you know what? I can heal. I can deliver. I can set free. I break the chain. God, we thank you, God, because you omnipresent, God. You are everywhere, God. You omniscient, God. You know all, God. You omnipotent, God. You have all power, God. So we, God, we thank you that nothing happens go past you, God. It doesn't catch you by surprise. That whatever we go through, God, that you have the power to, to heal, God. God, go to that home. Fix that family, God. That family, that spouse, that husband, that wife that want to throw in the towel. Remind them that that life has purpose. That person that's single, God. Let them know you're yet with them in a season of singleness. Oh, God, we thank you. Father, I ask you, God, to be with every church, God, that's preaching your name, that's preaching the uncompromised gospel. Father, I ask you, God, to encourage the leaders, those having the decision whether to keep the church open or to close the doors. Father, be with them in their decision-making. 
Allow them to consult you with every decision that they make. Every pastor, that preacher that's preaching today, God. Let them preach with passion today. Let them preach with purpose. Remind them that they're preaching to a dying world. Preaching to a world who needs to know who you are. And a world that, that needs to know that they can make it in spite of. Father, I ask you, God, to be with Pastor Chris on today. God, remove distractions. Decrease the flesh so you may get the increase in the spirit. Father, be with her as she preached the uncompromised word. And Father, I ask you, God, to be with every member of Encouragement Temple. Every member, every partner, every supporter, God. People are going through. That prayer, God, that situation that they will tell nobody about. But God, you know, Father, I ask you to move in that situation, God. According to your will. And Father, we thank you right now. And we ask these things. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we believe that is done. We believe that is done. We believe that is done. In Jesus' name. When we say amen. And amen. And amen. Amen.
who you are. He's the king of the Lord, okay? Lord of the Lord, 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 he's our friend, he's our savior, he's our God. He's our redeemer. He is the restorer of our soul. He's the forgiver of our sins. Oh, Lord, how we love you. I hope that you all will stay in that sacred space even as we move forward to the sermonic message. The Lord is good. He is great and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God, we love you and we bless you. And we say hallelujah to your name. I thank God for this opportunity. Even right now to stand before God's people, those of you that are here, and even our virtual viewers. I don't take it lightly to stand behind this sacred desk because indeed it is a privilege to proclaim the oracles of God. There is a word from the Lord today. And God's word will come from Mark, the fifth chapter. If you have your Bibles with you, would you just please stand just out of respect for the holy word of God. Mark, the fifth chapter. Beginning at verse 25. Mark the fifth chapter beginning at verse 25. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Holy Word of God. Amen. Amen. And this is how it reads. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Mm, come on. And Jesus, immediately knowing to himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Yes. But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say who touched me and he looked around to see her who had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth Come on, and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Okay. Amen. That is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. You can be seated in his presence. Yeah. For the time that we have to uh, share together, I want to tag this message. Don't let this end you. Mm. Don't, let it end. Don't let this end you. Yeah. Now, oh God, may the words of my mouth in the meditations of my heart. Be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus name, amen. Don't let this end you. By definition, preservation is defined as the natural or instinctive tendency to act in your own best interest so as to preserve one's life. 
If you look over the course of your life, look at your repertoire, the things that you've experienced and encountered in your life, you know that there may have been times and uh, moments of challenge where you had to engage what is called fight or flight. You have to determine whether you are going to engage this challenging situation or if you are going to run from for your life. But at the end of the day, when the smoke settles and the dust clears, your goal in mind was to preserve your life. Maybe it was in job security. You didn't know how you were going to continue knowing that they were laying off people. So you already sought out to find another place of employment. You were trying to preserve your life. Maybe you're in college and you don't know how you were going to pass those final exams, so you sought out tutors and people to help you out just so you wouldn't flunk out and have to repeat the semester all over again and consequently be sent home to live again with your parents. You were trying to preserve your life. Or maybe you can relate to a sci fair teacher, Sarah Bean, who said, I'm going to preserve my life, and so I decided to stick my COVID positive son in the trunk of the car so that I would not contract COVID. She was trying to preserve her life. Or maybe you can say, I can relate, or I know of the 10 year old girl who last summer ended up pretending to be dead after her home was robbed. Her parents were killed and one of her siblings. And so she pretended to be dead as she was holding her one year old brother when she was shot. She pretended to be dead so that she could preserve her life. I'm sure someone that is listening right now, maybe those of you that are here right now, you can say, hey, I know exactly what you're talking about. As a matter of fact, just recently, I've been feeling like my life has been hanging in the balance, like I'm just going along to get along. My life feels like a video game, and my life feels like I'm in a narrative where I'm losing the battle. I don't know where I'm going, who's coming and who's going, so I figured that something right now needs to be done, not just right now, but yesterday. I need my life to change. I won't let this in me. My life feels like a narrative in a screenplay. And in the back of my mind, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to make it in this predicament that I thought I was over with 5, 10, and 20 years ago. Now that I have, still have a crazy spouse, my relatives are still stabbing me in the back. I have nosy neighbors, an unfaithful spouse. I have cancer in my body, and my friends are acting shady. How do I preserve my life. I'm tired of being sick and tired. I don't want this mess to get the best of me. So right now, Lord, I'm screaming out, help me. Don't let this end me. If that's you, I invite you to follow me in this narrative that we have in Mark chapter 5. If you allow me just some time to give you a little background, Jesus himself had just finished healing a demoniac. He had crossed over to the other side, met with this demoniac, was able to heal him, and now he's back across on the other end of the Sea of Galilee. And now he's with his disciples. He's meeting with them, and he's seeking to continue to progress on his way to Jerusalem, making his way into the city. And as he is going, you know how people can be when they hear about a person, an individual of certain status and stature. He's making his way. Jesus is popular. And Jesus is popping. He's making his way all throughout the town. And he is moving along. And the crowd is starting to get bigger and bigger. And he now has an entourage of people that are following him along with his disciples. And they're gleaning and trying to listen, see what he has in mind, what he's going to do next. And as the crowd continues... To increase, we are introduced to someone named Jairus. Jairus is one of the synagogue leaders, and he approaches Jesus in a spirit of humility. Just give me a few moments to give you the background. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. He approaches Jesus in a spirit of humility. He comes to the Messiah in need of some assistance. You see, his 12-year-old daughter is extremely sick and is on the verge of dying. And so he comes to Jesus and says, look, I need you to come and help a brother out. I know I may not be worthy and I don't care about my position at this time because as you see, I met your feet. I don't care who's looking. I don't care about what people are saying. I need you and I need you right away. And so Jesus agrees to help out 
Jairus. Now the crowd, it continues to increase because as you know, they're trying to see what is Jesus going to do about Jairus' daughter? We know he's healed the demoniac. We know he's healed the paralytic. We know he healed the lepers. What is he going to do about Jairus' daughter? We see that he's agreed to go. And so Mark, what he does is he ends up sandwiching in between this request for help with Jesus. And he inserts an interruption from the procession, which is the leading point of our focus and our message today. He sandwiches in the middle of one cry for assistance with another cry of an unnamed woman. When we look at verse 25, we see that we're introduced to this unnamed person, so that means we can stick our name in this situation. Okay, right. And so we see how we don't know her name, we don't know uh, uh, her religious affiliation, we don't know how much money she brings, we don't know her social class, we don't know her marital status, or even if she has kids, but rather we are forced to simply know her by her situation, her external situation. We are forced to know her as the woman with the issue of blood. Right, that's right, that's right. Now, I like to just stop here parenthetically just to say that it's important for us to make sure that we are not guilty of knowing people simply by their situations. You know how people can be, oh, I know her, she used to sleep on the corner. I know him, he used to be a prostitute out on the street. I know her, she used to go back and forth, male and female, don't know which way she want to go. I know this person, they are thief, they robbed uh, Chase Bank the other day. I know that person's past. We have to be careful right. with identifying people simply based off of their situation. And so we see here the woman has a constant flow. 12 years. The Bible says 12 long years. A constant flow. She didn't get a break at all from her suffering. A constant flow. 12 years. 144 months. 4,380 days of constant flow. Constant issue. Constant headache. Heartache. Back pains. Constant nausea and dizzy. Constant suffering and ridicule. If it's not one thing, it was another. And to make matters worse, the Bible says that she got no better. She ended up being ridiculed throughout all these 12 years. She couldn't be around her family if she had it. Because according to the Levitical law, you could not touch anything that would make another person unclean. You could not touch your child. They would be ceremony unclean. Whatever you sat on was ceremony unclean. You couldn't lay with your husband. He would be ceremonially unclean. So you had to self Quarantine. We know about self quarantine. COVID 19 has taught us about self quarantine. Some of us couldn't even make it five days by ourselves, let alone 12 years with an issue where you couldn't be around, hug your family. You couldn't make it to the church. But this woman was ridiculed. She was limited as to what she could do. Because she had this issue that had been on her for 12 long years. And to make matters worse, the Bible says, John Mark records, he says, look, this woman, as he gives the narrative, she spent all the money that she had. She spent everything in her checking account, in her savings account. She poured out her 401k stocks. And boss, she used all the money that she had hidden under her mattress in the cookie jar and in the piggy bank. She used all the money that she had on expert doctors providing false hope of remedy by constantly, test, constantly texting her and conducting procedures on her, prescribing medications that didn't work, placebos and vaccines, and constantly making her feel like she is a subject matter. And nothing got better, but rather worse. She ended up broke and still hemorrhaging. Yeah, still hemorrhaging. Come on. And she was weakening by the day. Weakening by the day. Every day. I don't know about you, but I've given blood before. And there's been a couple of times where I've donated blood. And the first thing they tell you to do is just rest and have a seat when you're finished. I want to give a pint and I'm about.
got rid of faint. Imagine losing more than that on a day-to-day -day basis, going through everything that you had, seeing blood everywhere all day. Her life was being drained from her. You know the blood is the life source. Her life was being drained from her. Her situation was draining the life out of her. Have you ever been there where you felt like you tried to move forward and advance, but it seemed like everything continued to get worse, whatever you're struggling with, your drug addiction, alcoholism, bitterness, depression, low self-esteem, gambling, and your health condition, whatever it is, you thought you were getting better. You thought that you could handle it, but it just got worse. So what do you do? when your situation looks insurmountable. What do you do, woman and man of God, with your extra large Bible that you keep under your arm and at your bedpost every night? What do you do, professed deacon, when you've done all that you can do? What do you do, praise team, when it seems like you have been very drained every moment, every second of the day? I submit to you that you ought to hold your head up. Hold your head up because we can be encouraged that all hope is not lost. And in fact, we can learn a few things by this unnamed woman okay. with an issue of blood. She can teach us a lot about not allowing our situation to end us. And the first thing the text reveals to us that if we want to make it past our situation and endure so that we won't be ended, is that we have to continue to be uh, to have courage to risk it all. You have to have the courage to risk it all. Here in the text, we see that she made a decision to come out of the house to defy all the rules. She was breaking all the rules. She walked down the streets Probably was bumping in a few folks. Come on, come on. Probably didn't say, pardon me, excuse me. But at this point, she said, I need something. And it don't even matter if I touch you at this point. I need my deliverance and I need it. Now, I'm going to risk it all. Oh, come on, man. She had the courage. And to have courage literally means to possess strength in the face of pain and grief. Yeah. To be able to possess strength in the midst or in facing grief or pain. So she continued to walk. Yeah. The Bible says when she heard about Jesus, she decided to take action and seize the moment. Now I want to stop there because as I was reading this text, I said, well, in order for her to have heard about Jesus, someone had to have been talking. Someone had to have been talking somewhere. And in order for things to happen, people need to start talking. People need to start telling find out how they were delivered, how they were set free, how they were redeemed, how they were turned around. Jesus, I'm sure that as this woman was walking and got closer to the crowd, she heard people say, yeah, this is the same man that healed the paralytic. This is the same one that delivered the leper. This is the same one who spoke to the winds and the waves and they obeyed. This is Jesus. She didn't sacrifice or be willing to risk Get it to Jesus without having heard about them. Now, could it be that many people are missing out on their deliverance or their breakthrough because not enough of us are talking about Jesus? We're willing to talk about every and anything else except for the word, the works, and the worth of Jesus Christ. We can talk about who may make it to the Super Bowl game, but we won't dare talk about Jesus while we're on our work. We can sit there and talk about who's the best physician, who can recommend you to have plastic surgery, but we won't talk about the great healer. We can talk about who's able to be the best relative to give your house, but you won't talk about Jehovah Jireh, the provider. You won't talk about who he is and what he's done, but you can talk about everything else. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Nisi, the God of our banner, our victory. We got to start talking about him, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, not just when he does something for you, but if you look over 
over your life and you know he's blessed you, you know he's delivered you, you need to start testifying and telling someone else, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would have been. This woman heard about Jesus and said, it's time to make a move. So the woman, she thought to herself, I'm just giving you the picture. The woman thought to herself, okay, I hear what they're saying. I want to be a part of his repertoire of healing. All right, all right. So I'm going to keep moving forward despite how I feel. Even though my situation is painful, I'm going to keep moving. I'm not going to wait for him to come to me and say, Deke, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to make my way to him. If I got to crawl on this ground and smell the dust of the earth, I'm going to make my way all right. yeah. to Jesus. Sometimes we have to start talking to ourselves. The scripture says she said to herself, she wasn't looking for anybody to validate her statement. She said, if I could just get myself into the household of faith, if I, I could just make my way to the throne, I don't need somebody to take me to the king. I'll take myself there. She said, if I could just get there, then I know me with my messed up, unclean self. I know that things will change. If I could just get enough strength to push past the people and the ugly faces, if I could just don't even look at them and just make my way there. If I could just look unto the hills from which cometh my help, knowing that all my help comes from the Lord, if I could just get there. I may be sick, but I'm going to get to Jesus. Even if it means I have to live stream on Facebook or YouTube, I'm going to get to Jesus. I know I may have to be at work, but I'm going to make sure I prioritize getting in my word during my lunchtime. I'm going to get to Jesus. I may be in school or in class, but I'm going to make sure I use my recess time to pray to the Lord. I'm going to get to Jesus. She didn't allow the external situations of her life to keep her from an internal transformation that she needed to happen. You have to remember she bled for 12 years. So when you go through something for a long time, you're going to do whatever is needed to get your relief. And so she said, if I touch him, then I will be made well. I want us to focus just real quick on this word well. And, and the Greek, the translation is literally to be healed or preserved. Now, I want to make sure that you know that this word well does not mean whole as in what we see when, we, when the Lord Jesus says this same word later on. So I need you to make a note of that if you have your pen and paper. May well, this one here, when she says that she's looking at the physical right. aspect. If I can get to him, I can physically be made better. My physical situation will be changed. I'm not worried about making my way into the kingdom. I'm just saying, can I get rid of these 12 years of hemorrhage? Can I get rid of these bills that are due? If I could just get to him to help me to get a car, then I'd be made fine. I'm tired of being broke. So if these six numbers could just hit, I'll be fine. She says, I will be made well. I will be preserved. I won't have to die in this. She's not thinking about anything beyond the physical. And so the Bible says that even as she makes her way and she touches him, Immediately, the fountain, the root cause of whatever was her issue, dried up. All of it was gone. She was healed of her affliction, the very thing that caused chaos and suffering, pain and heartache. The very thing that divided her from the people in the household of faith, from her family, was healed. And that's a good thing because we didn't have to get ourselves together. She didn't get herself together. She was all messed up and tore up and went straight on to Jesus. Weary, wounded, and sad. Exactly how she was. And she allowed herself to get to him so that he could change her. We have to understand that when we seek the Lord, that he is sensitive. And we see here in the scripture that he too was sensitive to her cry. Even though she didn't say a word, she just touched him. So that's a message for somebody. You don't always have to say words. The Lord knows your heart. And he can see even past the words that we utter on a day-to-day -day basis. He says, yes, you may say I'm good, blessed, and highly favored. But I see the pain in your heart. I see the tears that flow from your eyes. I see the anguish in your soul. 
He says, but you can come unto me. All ye that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. I will help you carry it. Matter of fact, I'll carry it for you if you would just give it to me. So immediately she felt the symptoms. She felt it gone. She said, immediately I felt it in my body that I was healed. Not that just the flow. Anybody that has a psycho females know. You know when the flow is happening. Not just the flow stopped, but the symptoms associated with that had ended. A few months ago, and I'm just testifying right now, a few, oh, not a few months ago, a month or so ago, I ended up with COVID. I had COVID-19, and it was the worst thing that I ever experienced in my life. I had, uh, chest was tightening. Some of you know I have asthma, so a tightening of the chest, lost taste, headache, felt like my head was going to pop off my head. Yes. My head was going to pop off my shoulder, excuse me. I felt nauseated, did not eat for three days. I felt miserable. But even still in that pain, and even as I was suffering, that did not change one my perspective on who the Savior was. And did that not change what I thought that he was able to do. And so in that moment, my prayer warriors began to pray for me. And I began to lay hands on myself and say that I am healed in Jesus' name. I began to feel better and talk better and know that the power of the Lord God began to rest on me. I didn't know when it happened necessarily, as it was happening, but I knew when it was done. What am I saying? There are some symptoms that are associated with your suffering that when the Lord changes it, you absolutely know. I no longer had a pulse. I didn't have the nausea. I didn't have the headache. I, I got my appetite back. I was able to do everything that I thought I was able to do before. What am I saying? This woman, she no longer had the dizzy spells. She no longer experienced the flow. She no longer had to deal with the cramping internally. She no longer had to deal with the odor associated with it. The Bible said that she was changed immediately and she knew it. When Jesus heard or when Jesus noticed that she had touched him, Jesus responds in a very unique way. One, he stops the procession. Mind you, initially, the goal was for him to heal Jairus' daughter. So I can imagine how Jairus might have been feeling at this moment. Why are we stopping? Lord, I came to you first. Don't forget I'm the synagogue leader. I am, you know, I'm the preacher, I'm the pastor, I'm the teacher. I tithe. I came to you first, Lord. But now since Sister Booker is calling on you, why have you stopped to heal her? Can you imagine what Jairus was thinking? But the Lord, he continued to address the woman with the dire need, the one that had been isolated. Jairus didn't deal with any isolation. He was a leader. This woman had been isolated and ridiculed. She had been the scum underneath somebody's shoe for 12 years. And the Lord sought to stop. He thought she was important enough, even with her being a woman. Even with her being a woman. There was not... You all know in biblical times, it was a male-dominating society. Women were sought to be seen and not heard. And so when the Lord saw that she came upon him and touched him with her desired faith to be healed, the Lord thought it was worth saying something. Who touched my clothes? Which brings me to my next text, my next point. Not only must you have the courage to risk it all, but you must have the confidence to respond to the Almighty. The Lord said, who touched my clothes? Who, who needed something from me? But it's amazing that when he asked this question to the crowd, the disciples, in their non-spiritual thinking at the time, 
says, Lord, you see over five million people around you and you dare ask who touched you? Why are you asking this? But the Lord was not asking who bumped up against me. Come on, He's asking who touched my very essence by their faith. I have a lot of people that are bumping up against me wanting things from me, but this person touched me with their faith even though they have been scrapped across the floor, left out to be hung out. Even though this person, nobody cared about exchange happened. Yes. You do know that the Lord was called to take on our infirmities. Mm. And so he says, I felt a great exchange. I felt that I took on somebody's sickness and uncleanliness. My God. And I felt that healing and purity came out. I need to know who touched me. Mm. Who gave me something that I could feel? Yeah. Yes, Lord. Who was it who received divine deliverance? Yes. Who had the faith to believe that I could heal them and they trusted that I had the power to be faithful and accomplish it? Who was it? Who, was it? who, was it? who came to me not just to be part of the crowd or to be seen? Who decided to really get in connection with me? Yes. Yes. At this stage, this woman, she, she could not receive everything that she thought that she was going to be able to, to receive at this stage, this woman, she, she, I, she couldn't have possibly thought, and this is what I love about the Lord, couldn't have possibly thought that she would have received something divine from the Lord and the Lord would not want a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that the Lord doesn't just drop a blessing and walk off and leave me by myself, but he wants to make sure that I'm completely healed and whole. Come on, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So this woman, the Lord asked, who touched me? Yes. Who received from me? It is something about being in the presence of the Lord. And woe to the children of God and the people that profess to be in relationship with him. That only seek a rendezvous with the Lord and not a relationship with him. Right. Who seek to constantly get, 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 but never give, give, give to the Lord. The Lord knows exactly what you need. So when you come to him, no matter how great or small this or that, you can give it to him and trust yes, yes. that he will heal. The woman comes to Jesus as the narrative says. He comes, she comes to Jesus, which lets us know she must have walked away. Come on now, that's kind of how we are sometimes. We get from Jesus and then that's enough, Lord. Thank you for healing me. Now I'm going to go on about my business. And do what I do best. Thank you for paying my bills. Now I'm going right back to the club. To take care of my business. But this one that she left. Got her blessing and was trying to tiptoe away. Thinking hey, that she would go unnoticed. But the Lord says no woman. I see you. And you are the one that touched me. And so with that, she came quietly back to the Lord. This time, she was in a place of submission. Yeah. Not just a grab and go. Mm -hmm. But she was in a place of submission. She fell down at his feet. Yeah. Yeah. Fell down at his feet. And told him the whole truth. Yeah. Oh. Sat there and didn't worry again about J.R.'s and his situation. Didn't worry about whatever else anybody needed from the Lord. Told him everything. No one has been listening to her for 12 long years. And now she has the microphone. Come on. Yeah. 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 She has the opportunity to tell the Lord all about her pain. All about her heartache. All about her tireless nights. All about the ridicule that she experienced from religious leaders. From people that call themselves children of God. Right. Come on. All the pain and heartache. She told him the whole truth. It was me. I did it. I, did it. I, I know I went against the laws. Come on, come on. I know I, I went against the laws. Come on, come on. 
and I know that you uphold the laws. It was me. I messed up, Lord, but I needed you. I was standing in the need of prayer. I needed a healing for my soul. It was me, God. But I'm so glad that our God, our Savior, he doesn't get contaminated by our sin. He has more salvation than we can have sin. He has more mercy than we can have mess. He has more grace to suit our case. But he wants to know, would you come forward and be honest? Will you admit that you've messed up? So she humbles herself. And the Lord has compassion on her, even as he is with us, which leads us to the next and final point. Not only what must we have or be willing to risk, to risk it all. And not only must we be one who has confidence or has the confidence to respond to the Almighty, but we also have to be willing to cling to the Redeemer's affirmation. Okay. Okay. Cling to the Redeemer's affirmation. So after she tells him everything, after you've gone to the altar, you've laid it all down before the Lord. The Lord does something special for her. Okay. The first thing that he says as she admits everything that she's gone to is he called her daughter. She went from just being a woman, some unnamed woman, to being daughter. That means that he did something more than just heal her body. He welcomed her into the kingdom. He calls her daughter. You're now part of my family. He says, your faith, your faith has made you well. It wasn't that you touched my clothes. Mm. It's because you had the faith and the tenacity to dare to do it. Yes. Mm. And to trust me. We talked about this word well. And he says it here and again. Well, your faith has made you well. Mm. Says it in this verse. When he says well at this point, this also means the same as the first well that we addressed. Your faith has healed your body. Yes. Because you believe that I was Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Mm -hmm. Your body is now healed. But then the Lord does something else. He says, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. When we look at this, some also say well in some translations and be made well. But when we look at this particular one, the well that is used here is different. Come on, take it. It's different. The Lord is literally saying, yes, your faith has healed you in your body. But in this case, Jesus is saying you are being made whole according to the true doctrine of who I am. Good, yeah. good. You didn't know me initially to be a healer, to provide salvation and redemption. But now you know me. You've had a true encounter. Come on, yeah. come on, come on. So not only are you physically healed, but you are healed of your sin issue internally. You are my daughter right now. You are part of my family. And if anybody be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are healed. He told him, don't worry about it. He said, go, be. Go in peace. And be healed. Don't worry about what other people may say about your healing. Don't worry about what others may say about your deliverance. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Don't go thinking whether or not the hemorrhage is going to come back. Trust that I did it one and done for all. I am the great healer. And if I healed you, then that's Walk in the power of what has happened. I know others won't believe it. I know the doctors won't believe it because they couldn't do it. But walk in the healing. Walk in your deliverance. And trust that no matter what others may say, because they will try to bring it up. They will try to still call you the woman with the issue of blood. They will still try to call you the drug addict, the crackhead, the prostitute, 
the whoremonger. They will start still call you the liar and the thief, the cheat. They will start call, continue to call you the person that is big headed. Come on now. Conceited and arrogant. Judgmental. They will continue to call you that. But I need you to trust that your situation has changed and it did not end it. So for those of you that are dealing with marriage issue, those that are dealing with bereavement and heartache, trust that the Lord, if he has healed your mind, if he's healed your body, if he's healed your soul, if he's healed your finances, if he's healed your relationship, if he's healed you, then you are healed. The Lord says, go in peace. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Be happy now. Don't worry. Come on. Be happy now. And go be free. Be healed of your affliction. Whatever you dealt with, not just the flow, but the ridicule. Be healed. Let your mind be free. Don't hold on to what people have done to you during these 12 years of pain. Be free. And don't allow this to end you. If I, who is the king of glory, am able to go into a place, go all the way to the cross, be at the skull of God, God say, if I am willing to endure all of this for you, which is I'm on my way to the cross, even as I'm healing you. If I'm able to endure that and did not allow that to end me, don't allow your situation yes. to end you now unto him. Who is able to keep you from falling yeah. and to present you faultless, faultless before his presence with exceedingly joy, great joy to the only wise God. Be glory, honor, dominion, and power now and forevermore. Don't let this end you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Lord, our God, how I thank you. For your grace and your mercy. I thank you. For your covering. For your love and your faithfulness. Father I thank you for giving us the courage and the tenacity. The boldness to trust you with everything. And doubt you for nothing. Now oh God I lift up. Those that may be here. And those that are viewing us even right now. Father someone is struggling with making it to you. Their trust continues to lie in man and what man can provide. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that even as you are blessing, delivering, saving, and setting free, that that man, that woman, that boy, that girl will seek to chase after you. To come running unto you with the faith knowing that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask for a thing or imagine according to the power that is at work within us Father increase our faith help us to learn the lesson even from this woman this daughter of the most high God whose life was changed transformed forever Help us to learn and know, oh God, that you see us and you desire the most out of us. Give us the confidence and the willingness to trust you with everything, oh God, and to be willing to tell you the whole truth, all of our struggles. You don't make fun of us like man does. You don't laugh at us when we make mistakes, God. So, Father, I pray that whoever is hearing this message right now, that they will fall at your feet and say, Lord, I need you. Don't let this end me. Don't let my situation take over me. Control my mind, my will, and my emotions so that I can be molded to be more like you. And Father, we thank you for the victory. And we hold to your words of affirmation. And thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. 
and that guards our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. We thank you for salvation today and transformation through your word. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all and thank you. Amen and amen. For those of you that are still with us and viewing, we thank God that you were able to be empowered, enlightened, encouraged. But even beyond the somatic message, I invite you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the best decision that anyone could ever make. He has told us in his word that anyone that puts their trust in him shall not be put to shame. You can trust him at his word. If that is you and you desire a relationship with Jesus Christ, I offer Christ to you. I offer Christ to you. He is standing at the doors of your heart, knocking and waiting. He said, I'll meet you where you are. Even if you feel like you don't have the strength to meet me where I am. He loves you today. So if that's you, let us know. Send us a message in the chat. Send a message in the DM. Let us know. Reach out to us. Come to Encourage Him in Temple. And we will welcome you. We don't profess to be a perfect church, but we serve a perfect God. And we're constantly being perfected in and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we invite you to join us here in Encouragement Temple or receive salvation. If you are here today and you love the Lord, just say, thank you, Jesus. If he has delivered you and set you free, say hallelujah. 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 We thank you so much. Those of you that are with us, we bless the name of the Lord our God for the victory because we are his even right now. And I want to turn you over into the hands of Pastor Reed, who's going to give us the blessing and uh, give us the offering. Lead us an offering. Give us some announcements. Unless he wants me to do it, I can do it. I'm available, Lord. Let me do it, okay? those of you that are still with us, I just want to give you a few announcements and I thank you for tuning in with Encouragement Temple. We want to remind you that we will continue to have Bible study this Wednesday. We invite you to come on out. Press your way to the house of the Lord and to the presence of the Lord. Join us for Bible study so that we can have an interactive session so that we are making disciples even as we are called to be disciples. So our Bible studies will commence on Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. at 4714 FM 1960 West, Suite 103, Houston, Texas 77069. I invite you to join us at that time uh, where we will continue our Bible study series, Watch Your Step, Avoiding the Landmines and Pitfalls that Lead to Destruction. And we know that we all tend to fall into some of those pitfalls and landmines, but I thank God that he lifts us up out of the muck and miry clay that we fall into. So we hope that you would join us. And then also our worship experiences are every Sunday at 10 a.m. Please join us. Come connect with us via Facebook or YouTube. We do live stream on both platforms, and so we ask that you would connect with us in that regard. We do also have giving opportunities. We want you to make sure that you are giving unto the Lord, that you are bringing both the tithe and the offering to the Lord as we continue to build up his kingdom even here on earth. We want you to partner with the Lord. We can't do it in isolation or by ourselves. Partner with the Lord and continue to push the work of ministry of Encouragement Temple as we continue to meet the needs of the community. You have multiple ways where you can give, Cash App or PayPal, or you may mail your contributions into P.O. Box 60621, Houston, Texas 77205. We hope that you would take advantage of one or more of those opportunities to bring about the tithe. That's one-tenth of your increase to the Lord. That is something that he has required of us. And then go beyond that. Bring an offering. Let the Lord know just how much you really care and trust him to be what you need him to be. He is the great I am and we hope that you would trust him in that regard. And so even as uh, Brother Evan is going to help 
uh, collect the offerings today. Uh, we are going to pray over them, and then I ask that if you have an offering, just raise your hand, and he'll come and uh, receive that from you. Lord, how we thank you for the opportunity to give. Father, we know that you give us everything, and we thank you that we are able to worship you through our giving. So help us to be generous in our giving, that we are not giving grudgingly or, or in a, a place of contentment, oh God, but we give it smiling, knowing that we belong to you. So we have access to whatever you have. Now, oh God, we pray that no one will go lacking because they chose to give. But Father, that you will remind them that no one can beat you giving, no matter how hard they try. So Father, continue to replenish back to your people and wow them by the way that you're able to make ways. Father, we thank you that you are faithful to do it according to your will. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. And thank you. Amen and amen. Just raise your hand if you have an offer. And, offer, and uh, uh, Evan, if you could just please uh, go around and, and collect that. Also, I just want to add that uh, we've been mentioning our spring festival that we will have again in the month of March. More details are to come. If you want to volunteer, uh, we ask that you would uh, send us a message. You can reach out to us. Give us a call. All of, our, all of our information is definitely inside of both of our platforms via Facebook and or uh, YouTube. So we hope that you will connect with us. Again, send us a comment. If you've never volunteered before, this is your opportunity. It's a new year. Let's do new things. Go ahead and volunteer and help encourage me to out. If you know of someone that is willing and wants to volunteer, we're more than welcome to receive them. If you are a student and you're trying to get volunteer hours, come on out and volunteer with Encouragement Temple uh, in the spring and March. We have more information for you to come. More than likely, this invite will uh, be sent uh, electronically so you'll be able to register uh, to attend that. We want to go bigger and better in him and so we hope that you will connect with us in that regard. I believe that's all of the announcements, but uh, Fifth Sunday. This month we have a fifth Sunday? Yes. Okay. So I'm it's, it look to tell how often I look at the calendar, right? So fifth Sunday, uh, we will have our fifth Sunday fellowship, right? Okay, fifth Sunday fellowship. As per usual, please wear your college paraphernalia, your sorority, fraternity gear, wear your favorite sports, your basketball team, uh, 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 football team, whatever you're rooting for. Uh, make sure that you wear that. It's casual that day, and so we hope that you would join or connect uh, with us even right now. I, I have another question. Okay, that, that was a futuristic request I was getting from one of our youth. And so we, we ask, that you, again, that you would connect with us in that regard. I just want to remind you before we leave of what Encouragement and Temple is all about and what we stand for. Encouragement Temple is the place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness, where believers are empowered through the preached gospel and discipleship, and where the community, that's all of us, we're enlightened on God's saving grace to all. Please govern yourself according to those announcements. We hope to see you at one or all of those functions, those moments where we can connect with you and love on you. And so for right now, if there's nothing else, I'm going to send us away with the blessing and the benediction. Let us stand. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion and power now and forevermore even as we walk in victory not allowing our situations to end us in Jesus name be